I've studied the ketogenic diet for 10 years. I had my own personal transformation of over 100 pounds. Do I do a carnivore diet? No, I don't, but I'm an expert in fats and I'm an expert in proteins and I know when we have insufficiencies and when we need to change some things. Just because I don't personally follow a carnivore diet, I have in the past, but just because I don't do it right now, doesn't mean that I can't provide you with just a toolbox to be able to pull things from to have the most positive experience with carnivore. So what I've done here is I've compiled a carnivore grocery list. Now, I'm going to go right out and say that there are two things on this list that I haven't even put on the whiteboard that the general carnivore community probably wouldn't like. So I didn't put them on the list yet. I'll talk about them as we get towards the end of the video. This is the stuff that I think is going to be the most important that you get when you do carnivore. Now, word to the wise, carnivore is not the cheapest diet to do in a proper sense with the right ratio, okay? The food that you should be getting is pretty high quality stuff. Carnivore is effective. It's effective at modulating inflammation. It's effective at gut health. It's effective at modulating the gut microbiome. Okay, there's a lot of benefits there. But anyway, let's just go through this. So the goal with this particular list is to have a slightly Mediterranean spin on carnivore to ensure that we do not end up with micronutrient insufficiencies, okay? I'll explain a little bit more about what that means, okay? But the other goal here is to optimize our fat ratio. We want the best, most optimal fat ratio we can get on carnivore because we've eliminated fiber, we've eliminated carbohydrates, and now we're focusing mainly on, of course, proteins and fats. So that ratio becomes that much more important. So first of all, we're gonna aim for a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 to three, okay? I'm not gonna try to tell you that you need to have more omega-3s than omega-6s. It's just not practical, at least in the Western world. Uh, our fat to protein ratio, probably sitting in the ballpark of 1.75 to two. So fat to protein ratio. So almost two to one, somewhere in there. Our ratio of fats here, Less than 10% of our fats should be coming from polyunsaturated fats. I want 60 to 65% coming from monounsaturated fats, and I want 25 to 30% coming from saturated. Not a huge deal when we're talking about this grocery list. Anyhow, we'll break it all down. I do wanna ask if you haven't already, uh, down in the corner of this video, there's a button that is red, and that is the subscribe button. We have new videos coming out daily, okay? We have brand new metabolic flexibility videos, constantly researching the world of intermittent fasting, low carb diets, everything like that. So new videos daily. So please hit the little bell icon as well to turn on notifications. Also, after you watch this video, check out Thrive Market. They are an online membership-based grocery store. Super cool stuff, so really affordable pricing, but best of all, I've been able to create my specific grocery boxes. So things for fat loss, things for uh, keto, things for fasting, all to help you. So I've been able to do the grocery shopping for you, so you can just be like, hey, I wanna check out Thomas's Fasting Box or Thomas's Keto Box or whatever you like, okay? So there's a link down below, you can check them out. They're a big sponsor of this channel and they are awesome. So check them out after you watch this content. Before I get into this, there is somewhat of an argument that some of the carnivore community can make and it, it's a little bit nebulous, but basically they say that the micronutrient deficiencies or insufficiencies are null and void because the gut biome shifts to the point where you don't need those micronutrients anymore. I want to play it safe, okay? And I wanna have those micronutrients. So let's just jump right in. Eggs, we all know eggs are going to be good. They're tremendous on carnivore. An abundant amino acid profile. You're not gonna find a better amino acid profile than you are with eggs. So make mayonnaise from them, eat them straight up, hard boil them, whatever, okay? Super high in choline, which is a precursor to acetylcholine. So very good for your brain, very good for neurotransmitters, okay? just. Word to the wise, go for the pasture-raised stuff. Cage-free doesn't necessarily mean they were raised in a pasture or anything. So go for pasture-raised, spend the extra dollar or two. Uh, in terms of the steaks, ribeye and New York. Okay, ribeye is going to be a fattier cut, which ordinarily in a non-carnivore world, I would not lean towards ribeye. Since we're trying to get a little bit better of a fat to protein ratio with carnivore in this case, it's going to be a good ratio, but it becomes extra important with ribeye because of the fat content that you get grass-fed, grass-finished. I don't care if you have to go the other direction with other meats, but with ribeye, with that much fat in it, you're going to have the omega-6s that are stored in that fat. Okay, so we want more of the omega-3 profile, we want less of the toxins, less of the bad fats that we're looking at in a lot of just regular grain-fed meats. Uh, plus, you're gonna get the grain that's leaching through ultimately, right? We don't really want that. Okay, salmon lean for the sockeye salmon. It's going to be tempting to wanna to go for a wild Alaskan or anything like that, 
The reason I don't go for that is A, the contamination, but B, it doesn't have as much what is called astaxanthin. Astaxanthin is what gives salmon the pink pigment. Okay, you are not getting a whole lot of antioxidants coming in your diet on carnivore. You're leaning on your body's inherent, like natural antioxidant processes, glutathione and some of these other processes, which is great, but we can get a benefit. Okay, the reason that salmon is red is because of astaxanthin, and it's an antioxidant that helps support all the activity that the salmon is doing is when it's swimming upstream. It's causing a lot of stress on its body, so it needs its own built-in antioxidant. Cool thing is that astaxanthin protects the very powerful fat known as DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, okay? So, Another thing that you want to get as kind of an added bonus is going to be salmon caviar. You don't have to do it, but the thing with salmon caviar is the type of fat that's in salmon caviar is what is called a lyso DHA. It's a specific kind of DHA that gets into the brain and is very powerful. So if you're doing carnivore, it would be foolish to not try to get some caviar in because what it means is it has its own MSF D2A transporter. Regular DHA from sardines, salmon, still good, but it has to go through a process and ride on a transporter into the brain. Whereas Lyso DHA comes equipped with its own shuttle bus to get into your brain. So have a small dose of that. Oysters and mussels should be on your list, whether they're canned or not. Go for canned in water if that's the case. Zinc and manganese, which is easy to become deficient in on carnivore. Just have a serving of those once a day or once every other day. Ghee is a must, okay? You gotta have some ghee, okay? Ghee is 4% to 6% butyrate, which is a direct fuel for your, short, uh, for your gut, so short chain fatty acid. Higher smoke point, long story short, it converts into ketones easy, it helps support a ketogenic state within your body, very powerful stuff. Cheeses, if you're going to go for cheese, and I know you're going to, go for Roquefort or Feta, okay? Now, here's the thing, with Roquefort, it's a high, high, high probiotic count. So if you're not getting your veggies, you're not getting sauerkraut, you're not getting fermented stuff, get the cheese that at least has a high probiotic count. Very high in something known as androstin A2, which is very good at preventing neurodegenerative diseases. So again, things we would normally say uh, veggies are good for, we can get a little bit of benefit out of like Roquefort cheese. Then when it comes to feta, you wanna go with it because it's a sheep milk, so it's made from an A2 casein, made from A2 protein. Uh, that means there's no beta caseomorphin 7 conversion. Basically, it doesn't have the negative effects that a lot of cheeses can have in abundance. So you could go to town on Roquefort and go to town on feta and not really have a problem. Uh, collagen peptides, kind of a supplement, kind of not, but it's important because you need, and this is very important, you're eating so much muscle meat that you're getting an abundance of what is called methionine. Methionine is an amino acid, but when you have too much of it, it actually can be toxic and can actually affect homocysteine levels. It can be very negative from a cardiovascular standpoint and other health issues. Glycine balances it, it counteracts it. And collagen, very high in glycine. We have evolved to be eating nose to tail. We should be eating tendons and things like that if that's the case, which is kind of gross for a lot of people. So collagen at least gets you that glycine to counteract that methionine. Liver, you're only gonna eat it every other day, okay? It's easy to get hypervitaminosis and have too much vitamin A. So vitamin A is the reason we go for liver, a bioavailable form, super good stuff, but you know, you go a couple grams, do that every other day. Heart, if you want to, because it's high in coenzyme Q10, I understand a lot of people don't wanna eat heart, but I'm trying to get this totally balanced protocol here. If you're gonna do carnivore, do it right. Don't just eat steak. Come on, give yourself what it needs. Don't be lazy, all right? So the alternative is to take 600 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 in the supplement form. Tallow is an amazing, amazing fat in this case. It's the ideal palmitic, steric, and myristic acid profile, which means perfect saturated fat profile with just the right balances of the kinds of saturated fat. That's right, there's different kinds of saturated fat, which means that it's going to decrease the expression of the LDL reuptake receptors, meaning it's going to allow LDL to get taken up by the liver and processed and not float around in your bloodstream. I saw someone on the internet who shall remain nameless um, complaining about how someone got him onto the carnivore diet and his cholesterol levels went high. And this person uh, that he was complaining to is a well-known nutrition person that is notorious for not being very nice. And they went on and on about how people that condone carnivore are terrible. And I don't generally promote carnivore, but the point is, is that 
uh, talking about their LDL levels going up. Well, that's a common thing when people do not pay attention to the kinds of saturated fats that they're getting because it prevents the liver from reuptaking those LDL receptors and then they stay in the bloodstream and they oxidize and that can trigger atherosclerosis, that can cause inflammation, that can cause problems. So we want to be careful with that. So tallow is a great way to be cooking just to be able to get the right balance. Uh, quick supplements that I would recommend, omega-3 uh, krill or calamarine style, magnesium, okay, dimagnesium maley, it's my go-to, uh, vitamin C, okay, vitamin D3 plus K2 MK7, okay, salt, low salt, which is potassium, and then optional essential amino acids to take along with your food that you're eating to get a little bit more protein availability. And the two things I promised you I was going to talk about that the carnivore community generally wouldn't accept if you can and if you're willing, this would be my spin, I would be willing to still have extra virgin olive oil, okay, because of the hydroxytyrosol, and I would still be willing to have macadamia nut oil because of the palmitolytic acid, or because of the palmitolytic acid. Those things play such a crucial role in fat utilization and adipose distribution. I just think it's worth it to have them, and you're not having the fibers, you're not having the plant product, you're just having the oil. You can do away without them, but I do recommend that you use that. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of mac nut oil, and other than that, just to drizzle on some food and stuff like that. Other than that, this is pretty darn balanced. So as always, keep it locked in here. Don't forget to check out Thrive Market down below in the description, and I'll see you tomorrow.